new class. I want to encourage you, um, if if you want, I want to encourage you to to start a, a notebook library or a digital library of the Bible studies that we do, and in, in the in the church, like dedicate a notebook or if you can bring your laptop or any device to record notes. Um, the goal of a Bible study is for us to be able to not only just learn the truth, but also to reciprocate it, right? To, to teach uh, the Bible as we go through. Um, and so this is a study of the book of Revelation. Um, I'm thankful that Aaron is reading uh, the book of Revelation for our devotions this month. I want to encourage us to read the book. It will, it will be a while before we get to the text because there's a lot of introductory material uh, to, to cover that will help us make sense of the text as we dive into uh, this study. The material I'll be using for the introductory portion uh, is from a friend of mine, Jonathan Burns. You may remember Jonathan, he passed through here on his way to uh, Mission Field and he preached for us maybe once or twice, I don't remember. But but this is a, a, a introductory material that he put together, and I thought it was it was pretty organized. Uh, so I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel uh, when it's it's already working. And so all the credit to him for the material uh, that I'll be sharing to you um, as we start this study of Revelation. There's a reason why. Revelation is the last book of the Bible, um, and I appreciate that it is the last book of the Bible, um, especially in this sense. Um, I would not recommend Revelation to someone who is just deciding to pick up the Bible for the first time, because uh, you've got to have a sense of hermeneutics. Uh, um, understanding, having a sound hermeneutical approach before diving into a book that is filled with coded language, right? And so, and so it's, it's good for us to study it. And I, I, um, I meant to start the study last year, uh, but here we are. Um, several reasons why I decided on this study. One, there's been a lot of material pushed out, uh, to the twisting of the book of Revelation. Like they're, they're on TikTok, they're on YouTube, they're on social media. There's a lot of videos that where people are trying to take Revelation and use it as the guide for our modern day events, all right? Or take the book of Revelation and use it as a guide to say, yeah, don't vote for Kamala or don't vote for Trump. And it's on both sides. Or to say, Hey, this next president is the Antichrist. We've heard that many times throughout the years. It's important to understand. Uh, another reason is our young people, our young people. And I've received several text messages from some of you um, about, you know, your work environment, where you work. There's a lot of talk about this book. And again, related to recent events uh, and the book of Revelation, seemingly prophesying the events that we are experiencing today. And so that's that's one of the reasons why you want to dive into to a study of the book. Another uh, which is obvious, it's God's word, right? And it's it's it deserves our attention. All of the books of the Bible deserves our attention. Um, in my time as your preacher, I have not covered all the books of the Bible. Uh, which is a goal um, uh, that I have uh, for our congregation to eventually cover every single book of the Bible in, in my time, uh, Lord willing, in my time with you. And so this is us covering the book of Revelation. The introductory material may cover a three months span of time. Um, <laughs> it's going to be long. Um, and it's going to be detailed. 
but it's going to be good and necessary. It's going to be information that will help us uh, get a better grip of the book of Revelation. Um, just out of curiosity for our members, when was the last time you had a study on the book of Revelation, if you could recall? Rick Ring. I think I remember that. <laughs> I think I was brand new to this church when Rick was, I think he was finishing up the book of Revelation. I remember um, certain things were said that that was Rick's favorite book. <laughs> um, okay, so Ben and Rick. So so it's it's been a minute. Um, um, covering just the very basics, uh, just, just uh, check on on our understanding of the book of Revelation. I'm just going to open this up before we dive into the material. Um, what do you know about the book of Revelation? Go ahead. It's probably one of the most challenging books. Certainly. It was said that, um, Greg, for our Zoomers, it's one of the most challenging, probably, and I agree. Um, it is. It is one of the most challenging books. There are a lot of places in this book where you will hear me say, I don't know, because that's just the reality of it. Um, because of the amount of cold, cold language in there, there are just some things we, we really just don't know. Um, but, you know, there are things we can know and, and things that we can be assured of, which when it comes to the book of Revelation, we know that God wins. Right. That's one of the themes of the book of Revelation. In the end, God wins. And I want to be on a winning team. I know you too. You too want to be on a winning team. Uh, God wins. Christians win. All right. Uh, Lillian? A absolutely. Um, uh, Lillian, touch on one of the purposes of the, of the book. It was written to an audience that was being persecuted, hence the code, hence the apocalyptic language in there. Um, uh, what else? What do we know? Rent? It's not in chronological order. The events of the book are not necessarily in chronological order. Yeah, the 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 um it's a historical book, but it's also a prophecy book. One thing we know about that genre in the Bible, the historical genres like Genesis and, and um, the various history, books of history, it's not always in chronological order, right? Um, something to keep in mind. Uh, Ralph? Written by the Apostle John uh, on the island of Patmos towards the end of his life. Right. Um, John is the author of this book. John the Apostle, not John the Baptist, John the Apostle. Uh, this is one of his uh, uh, books that he wrote. Uh, you have the Gospel of John, uh, first, second, third, and the book of Revelation. What else, Lala? Yes, it gives warning and it gives hope. It it, it has the same uh, um, theme as the prophets. If you read the books of the prophets, there's a lot of warnings, but it's not just warnings. There's a lot of hope at the end of it. But it is the book of prophecy of the New Testament, the book of Revelation. So it has that. You'll see that uh, there's this evil uh, that is coming and there is this evil in the world but also there is this God who loves and who protects and who will avenge his people, all right? So you, you, you definitely see that, that theme in there. What else? It's a book of symbols? Yes, yes, exactly. It's a book of symbols, uh, 144,000. You'll hear a lot of sevens, right? A lot of sevens in the book of Revelation. You, you know that the number seven in the Bible it represents completeness or wholeness, right? God created everything in sixth day. On the seventh day, he rested. His work was finished, right? So you see a lot of sevens. 
and we we have that in the slides here. Um, anything else, Yona? Yes. So Yona brought up it, um, the 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 meaning of the of the name of the book Revelation is to reveal things. Uh, things revealed to the seven churches. We read about chapter two, chapter three, about things that will soon happen, right? It will soon happen. Uh, that's a very key part of the book uh, that will help us understand and interpret it. All right, sounds like we're, we know this book, so we'll move on to our next book. <laughs> All right, so in the, in, the, in the introductory, oh, sorry, did I miss a hand? Go ahead, sister, yeah. Thank you. I see that it, it's helpful to understand Daniel, right? Some of the Old Testament books, like the language there, um, helps people who are receiving this letter to get to, to they have a historical background. Yes. And to understand the language and interpret it. Absolutely. Uh, for, for our Zoomers, uh, one of our, our sisters visiting, what was your name? Angela. Angela, what was your name? Theo. Theo. Okay. Um, visiting with us, and, and she shared that it's important to have a little bit of knowledge of the book of Daniel and some of the, the books of the prophets because of the language that is deployed as code, right, uh, for the uh, first century church. Pat? I was wondering about the book of Revelation to me, the hardest <laughs> of all the books of the Bible to understand because of so many. Uh, interpretation deeper among all the interpreters. <laughs> true, true. I mean, we're we're gonna uh, for for our Zoomers. Pat shared is is one of the most hardest books to understand because of you know many have approached it and interpret certain things in various ways. Uh, um, the idea of we 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 read one verse of Revelation, and there are probably seven or ten <laughs> interpretations of that one verse. And it, it is important to understand how we are approaching the book because that, that impacts interpretation, similar to the idea of, of, uh, of the worldviews, right? What is your worldview? Because your worldview interprets how the world is. Yeah, and if your worldview is God is, then you look at life and how things are in this world from the perspective that is true, God's perspective which is revealed in the scripture. If your worldview is there is no God, then it impacts how you interpret life, right? It impacts how you deal with certain things in life, how you deal with depression, hardship, you know, uh, people that don't have God, really, there's no hope. There's really no hope. And, and uh, they have this idea that um, when you die, you just cease to exist, all right? And, and we know that's not the case. All right, uh, here are several, two main parts. The intro, which will be about three months. Uh, you know, I talked to my friend and I said, how long did it take you to cover? And he said, about three, about about nine weeks. And so I was like, okay, um, we'll see how, how quickly we go. I'll try to, to move fast with the introductory material because it can be a lot of information. Uh, but it's necessary information. We're going to talk about the book, all right, the book itself, which we'll cover some today, uh, which you already cover in large by what you shared with me, the author, the setting, the nature of the book. Um, we kind of already touched on that. Vocabulary is so important to define the terms because how, how John deployed some terms is different on how Daniel deployed it and how other authors deployed it. So though you may have a, a Greek word that has the same meaning uh, in the Greek dictionary, uh, the context will truly determine how it's being used or how it's being deployed. So we'll spend some time on some of the vocabulary that is used in the book of Revelation to help us uh, sort of appreciate the code, uh, the, the way it's written, and appreciate uh, the, the message revealed. There are themes in the book of Revelation uh, that we'll cover. There are churches. I love, uh, and I preached a ser several sermons here already, and I, I'll do it again. 
I love preaching from the churches in Revelation because these churches, uh, they, 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 they are just the, the map, if you will, of the churches of today. Like if you read, if you read uh, uh, each letter to each congregation, um, the issues that Jesus address, the rewards that he that he gives, and the commendation that he gives to these churches, it speaks true of today and the environment of churches today. And so, um, it will be quite the challenge for us as a congregation as we study the churches in Revelation. Um, it's a it's a point of examination, right? It's a point of of soul searching and and saying, is that us? <laughs> are we Smyrna, or are we Ephesus, or are we Laodicea, right? Or it, it doesn't always it doesn't always be the case that we're a specific church. It could be we have uh, uh, um, characteristics of Ephesus, of Laodicea, and of Smyrna, right? And there's there's that sermon. That 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 preaches the letter to the eighth church, and I I, I preached that at, at preaching school. But the letter to the eighth church would be a personal letter from Jesus to our congregation, right? If if we were to have a, a finger on the pause of our congregation, then we would know what Jesus would say to us, and that would be that eighth letter, right? Because uh, we see seven letters in there. Um, the sevens, seven lampstands, seven angels, uh, seven beatitudes. We'll we'll cover some of the the all the sevens represented here in the book of Revelation. There's our clock. I was looking for it. Okay, that's a good place for it. I can actually see it. Is it is it five minutes faster, like upstairs, or okay? All right, so here's our outline as we, um, um, well, this is the part two, which is supposed to be after two months or two or three months. This is where we actually dive into the text, where we read the text, discuss the text, interpret the text, and apply the text. But the first part is all introductory material, all right? And so you, you have an outline here that he gives um, understand something about outlines, right? Uh, in commentaries, there are outlines. Preachers approach the book and they would formulate their own outline. Uh, this is an outline from Jonathan. I have a different outline, uh, but it's an outline nonetheless, right? It's themes. Outlines are based on themes that are found in chapters of the Bible. And that's how this is approached. The King, chapter one. Uh, the authority, right? The letters from Jesus to the churches. And then you go for the worthy. You get that throne room scene where you see the heavens saying to God, worthy art thou, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is, who is to come, right? Uh, and continuing on, you have the wrath, the judge, the city at the end, um, Chapter 22, or 21 to 22, one of the most challenging chapters because uh, uh, there's a lot of, again, different interpretations on, on what is said about the new heavens and earth or the new Jerusalem or the city of Jerusalem. All right, let's talk about the book. We're going to start with the biggest part, which is kind of like the big picture of the book. And you get a sense of that from the very opening uh, statement of inspiration, right? So go with me to Revelation 1 and verse 1. Verse 1 is a key verse. I'll say verse 1 through 3, but the very uh, introductory of the book is, is powerful. And it sets the setting and the tone and, and, and the... Uh, uh, the context of the book. Um, revelation 1 verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. 
which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified by his angel to his servant, John. It's a lot to unpack in this one verse. The first is the revelation. I want to touch on that. The revelation, the the Greek word apocalypsis or apocalypsis. Strong gives a definition, um, a disclosure, right? A manifestation. It means to be revealed or a revelation. This is why they gave the name of the book is because of this opening, the revelation, um, instead of it being called the letter of John or another book from John, right? Is because of, of the opening of this book. Um, Thayer gives this, this definition. Um, he says, in New Testament and ecclesiastical language, it means a disclosure of truth, instruction, concerning divine things before unknown, especially those things relating to the Christian salvation given to the soul by God himself or by the ascended Christ, especially through the operation of the Holy Spirit. All right, so, so the meaning of that word is to disclose uh, the will of God. The word revelation itself, right, not the book, but the word itself, um, this is what God has done for us, all right? God didn't create us and say, good luck, <laughs> right? Uh, good luck out there in the world, <laughs> right? God, God created us and he gave us a life manual. He gave us revelation, right? He revealed himself to us. And we know that uh, in regards to revelation, it's twofold. It's twofold. There's one, there's general revelation and I've, I've talked about this many times, but let's read it real quick in Romans chapter 1. General revelation is God revealing himself through his creation. Right? It's me looking at the sun and the moon and the stars and seeing that there is fine tuning in God's creation. Right, uh, The sun always comes up, you know, uh, and we have ways to to, to predict sunrise and sunset and and know where it's going to come up throughout the year, right? And you notice that too on living on this island, there's certain times you don't see a sunset down here at Almana Park because it's over there on the other side of the island and Sunset Beach. And there are certain times in the, uh, that you won't see it there, but you'll see it straight out on Moana. So, so it's us looking at the creation and concluding, wow, Look at this world. Look at what God made. Or, or not, not even mentioning God yet. Look at how things are in the world. And how things function. There is design in creation. And because there is design in creation, that assumes there's a designer. Right? Uh, take, for example, the uh, one of the most intelligent things that God designed is DNA. Right? Doesn't DNA will not come about to be what it is by accident? It's code. It's information, right? And information is the product of the mind. It's the product of the greatest mind, who is God. And so many, many great scientists in history, you name them. Einstein, Newton, many of these men, um, they understood that there was a greater being who was responsible for everything that they see, for the order in creation, the design in creation, the fine tuning, uh, the uh, the uh, in the realm of, of, of biology, the, the science of, of mutualism. Right, the mutualism in 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 uh, in uh, biology. How there are animals that depend on one another to survive. 
right? Because God created them that way. Romans chapter one is an example or is an allusion to God's uh, existence being known through looking at our surroundings. So I'd like to read that for us. Romans chapter one, beginning in verse 16. I like to begin in verse 16 because I like the flow of thought, right? Romans 1, 16, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. You'll see revelation throughout this, this discourse by Paul. We already notice it At, in verse 17. What is revealed in the gospel? What is, what 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 comes through revelation through the gospel, right? The righteousness of God, right? It's revealed in the gospel. Now notice this, verse eighteen. It's more about revelation. For the wrath of God is revealed. Okay, so His righteousness is revealed through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, but then His wrath is revealed in this sense, is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Now notice this, because what may be known of God, what can be known and what is known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. So in other words, God has shown himself to man. And and not be foolish to deny him. The psalmist says that. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Right? It's one of the most illogical conclusions one can draw in life, having been exposed to nature and the creation of God. He continues on and he says, because what might be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen. Wait, 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 let's back up. The invisible attributes of God can be clearly seen. Right? You wrestle with that thought. <laughs> what are some of the invisible attributes of God? Say again. What about the wind? Certainly, John deployed that when he talked about the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, how the wind blows, you can't see it, but the, the effects of it is felt similar to the Holy Spirit. Yes, you can see the effects of the powerful God through the wind, right? You've seen a tornado and what a tornado can do. Um, um, one of my favorites through the thunder and lightning. Um, you know, uh, the the amount of electricity uh, that that is generated just through uh, a bolt of, of lightning and that it, the, the sound of that explosion. Um, it shows a powerful person is responsible for such powerful things. Right. So, so here in an instant, one of those in, invisible attributes of God that we see is his power. Right. His uh, um, omnipotence. Right. His almighty power. You see it in the creation. You see it in animals. You see it. You do a study of the human body. Um the power of God, the ability to compute information at a very high level, higher than any computer created by men, all through the eyes, right? The design of the eye. It, uh, camera cam uh, companies, they try to mimic God's creation so they can have, you know, these really nice cameras that are able to zoom in on things. They, they have to mimic um, uh, 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 God's creation. That's called a uh, biomimicry, right? Like, like when you mimic uh, God's creation, 
Um, what else? What what other invisible attributes of God can be seen in the creation? Say again. His love. Yeah, his, his love. Jesus referenced that. He makes the sun and to rise and the rain to fall on the just and the unjust to provide everybody with crop. Even though if you're a sinner and you're a farmer, God's rain will fall on your land. And you will be blessed. Because that's who he is. He's a God of love. How about his uh his his uh intellect, his intelligence, certainly seen through creation. Um, one of my favorite things in the ocean is an octopus. Have you seen an octopus and what it's able to do when it camouflaging itself, when maneuvering through very small cracks? Have you seen a, a giant octopus go through a little hole like that? <laughs> It shows the, the genius of God, uh, the intelligence of God, right? And so the writer says that here, that's general revelation. It's, I can get this information just by looking at my environment, right? There's a water cycle. When I plant a seed, I can't make a tree grow, but it grows out of the ground because of the processes that God has set in nature for it to grow, right? Um, and then it bears fruit. And I do nothing to it. But to water it, maybe. But it does everything that God has designed it to do. So that's what that's what Romans 1 is telling us here. Uh, the invisible attributes of God are clearly seen and being understood by the things that are made. In other words, when I look, I'm not even looking at the Bible yet. I'm just looking at nature. Nature says God is, right? Nature tells me someone created all of this. It wasn't an accident, as the conventional science say. It wasn't you became a human after coming from a monkey. <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't. Uh, maybe when you're five or four years old, you kind of act like a monkey sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'm kidding. Uh, my kids love to sing that song. Three, four little monkeys jumping on a bed. Yeah. But they're humans in the video, right? Um, anyways, again, general revelation is that God showing himself through the creation. And then it says this, even his eternal power and Godhead. So it's not just his invisible attributes the very fact that he is an eternal god when we reason uh with our existence the 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 only thing that makes sense is someone who's not bound by the elements or by the processes or by time has to be responsible for all of this someone outside of creation must be responsible for creation, because when we look at the laws of thermodynamics, right, we, we see that everything, the second law of thermodynamics, everything is running down. We're not forming energy. We are actually losing energy, right? And, and, and God is outside of that, right? When we look at creation, we see that. We see decay. We see rust. We see death, right? And the God who created us is not subject to those things. He's eternal. He's outside of it. All right. And then it continues on verse 20 and says, so that they are without excuse. All right. Wait, Lima, are you saying that, that I can know there is a God without looking at my Bible? Yes. And are you saying that because I can know there's a God without looking at my Bible, I'll be held accountable by this God? Yes. All right. And so that's general revelation. He says, there is no excuse. No one can stand before the almighty God on the day of judgment and, and truthfully say, 
God, I didn't know you. Or no one can use that excuse on the day of judgment because the Bible says here, he has sufficiently revealed himself to man. Now, that, that's just general revelation. But then there's specific revelation or special revelation. And that's what this book is. And we thank God for it, right? And a big picture, right? That's the word revelation when it comes to the Bible. It's God revealing himself to man. We'll stop right there. That's a good place to stop. So we haven't even started the introductory. Uh, <laughs> so if it takes him three months, it might be, it might take me longer. <laughs> we're we're in this uh, for our visitors. We're in year two of studying the Book of Acts. Um, uh, the plan is to finish it this year. Right? Um, if you go on our YouTube, it's well over sixty videos, recordings on the Book of Acts. So so so, but they're all. I believe they're all in order. Might might be some out of order, but they're all in order. I appreciate your time, your attention. I'm excited about this study because uh, I'm not only benefiting from it, I, I'm definitely benefiting from it. And I know you'll benefit from it as well. Um, let's uh, close with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for being our God. Thank you so much, Father, for your love, your mercy, and your grace, your truth, and your justice. Thank you for your revelation through nature and, and through the word given to us, Lord. We thank you so much for not leaving us in the dark, Father, for giving us a guide in, in our lives, that we don't have to wander uh, with, with doubt, and, and we don't have to go through this life without any sense of purpose. We thank you that your word reveals to us who we are, where we came from, and where we can go because of your love for us. Thank you so much for the gospel, your plan of salvation, for sending your only son to reveal who you are to man, to be our inter intercessor and our high priest who knows and understands what we go through in this life. Thank you for his obedience and his willingness to sacrifice his life so that, so that we can all be saved. Father, we thank you for this privilege and blessing of prayer. We thank you for hearing and answering all of our prayers as according to your will. Father, we pray for your comfort and for your peace to be on the curate family, Lord. Please. Strengthen them, Father. Make known your presence in your life, Father. And may we as the church be a source to them, to encourage them. And we all pray for, for their souls too, Lord, that we may have an opportunity to teach the gospel to them all. Please be with his wife. Heather and his children, Lord, comfort them through these times. Father, we pray for safe travels for our visitors uh, and for our members. Safe travels for Rod as he's traveling, Lord, bring him home safely to us. For our visitors that they enjoy their time here on the island and return back safely to their homes. We praise you, Father, for uh, the results for Lance, that uh, the test was favorable for him. Uh, we thank you and we praise you. And we thank you for, for the connection that he has through Rose and, and her co-worker. We, we pray, Lord, that all of us as your family, as your children, uh, will tune in more in the relationships that we do have in our lives Understanding, Lord, that you put us in their lives to be the light, to show them Christ. And so help us to do what we can 
if it's to encourage, to pray, to teach, to provide uh, some help by doing good. Help us, Lord, to recognize the opportunities that do come up and to utilize those opportunities for your glory. We pray for Susan Morris as she is getting tested uh, for her uh, throat cancer, Lord. We pray uh, for the results to be favorable for her. And we pray for her healing, Lord. We know that you can do all things, Lord. We ask it be your will for her to recover fully. We pray, Father, for everyone on our prayer list, especially those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. We pray for JD and Briska. We pray for um, Clinton and Sandy and the Ng family. We pray for everyone who is mourning the loss of loved one, Father. Please comfort everyone. We pray for those who are sick to recover. We pray for those who are struggling spiritually to find strength. Help us as your family to be uh, our brother's keeper, our sister's keeper, to reach out and encourage. Father, we sin, we fall short, and we pray, Lord, we will always be humble to recognize and acknowledge our sins before you. We ask, Father, that you forgive us of our shortcomings, but also, Lord, to strengthen us to overcome the temptations that do come. Keep everyone safe tonight, Father, as we depart from this place. Bring us back in the next appointed time. For the remainder of our week, lead us to some soul that needs to experience the love of Christ. Help us to be that encouragement to them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.